In this video, we're just gonna get some extra practice with the addition rule. And so, um, I've kinda got some text here, but basically I want you to know that this is not a deal where we are hoping you just repeat a, a set of steps, but I really want you to think critically about what we're doing and come up with some creative strategies for solving these problems. So figure out, see what you can figure out on your own. And so, I'm just gonna walk through one way of solving these, but pause the video, try these on your own, and um, you may very well get the right answer with a different strategy, and I think that's great. And so just kind of a quick review of things to know is that uh, we know the addition rule, that the probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. We also need to know the definition of mutually exclusive. If we have mutually exclusive events, that means that the, the odds of them both happening, of A and B happening, is zero. And then the sum of all probabilities for a given event is one. We need to know that. If you find out all the different outcomes and the probabilities of each of those outcomes happening, you add them all up, that should total to 100% or one. And then in the previous video, I referenced uh, the complement. And so I'll, I'll just read this. If the probability of event A happening can be shown with P of A, then the probability of A not happening can be shown with the probability of A prime. See, that's, we call that as a prime, which reads as A complement. Okay, so probability of A happening, probability of not A happening. If this is 20%, this is 80%. If this is 67%, this is, oh, what, 33%? Okay, so I hope you, yeah, we really want you to have these ideas kind of in your, in your pocket as we go through these videos. And so here's our first question. It says um, for two events, A and B, probability of A equals 0.41, probability of B equals 0.43, and the probability of A or B, I guess I could have used the, the union notation, is 0.81. Are these events mutually exclusive? And so let's get a little Venn diagram going here. And um, let's, just, let's just problem solve and see what we can figure out. So uh, how I would go about this problem is I would, I would sit here and go, okay, um, I, I, I'm not sure maybe how to tell if something's mutually exclusive, but what can we figure out about this situation? Um, and, and what we know is this. We know that the probability of A or B happening is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay. And then what we've talked about is if the events are mutually exclusive, the probability of A and B happening is zero. In other words, there would be no overlap here between A and B if they're mutually exclusive. So if I take this relationship that we know is true, this addition rule, let's substitute in what we know and see what we can figure out. We know the probability of A or B is 0.81. The probability of A is 0.41, and the probability of B is 0.43. And we're trying to solve to see if there's a, a non-zero value here. So let's just call that X for now, okay? So um, let's just do a little algebra and you might already kind of see where we're going. I kind of combine like terms right here, and then I can subtract 0.84 from each side, and I can divide both sides by negative one. And what we just figured out is we figured out that x equals 0.03, and we defined x as the probability of a and b, and that's 0 0.03. That means there's a 3% there's a chance of both a and b happening in this particular situation. So because of that, these events are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive. Next problem. So here we are given um, two events. Probability of A is 0.4. Probability of B is 0.5. And then A and B is 0.3. So we know that the intersection is 0.3. That was given to us. And then um, we can go, like before I even really attack these, like sometimes I like to kind of fill out what we know here in these diagrams. We know, for example, that the probability of, of A is 0.4. So this is 0.4 right here, but we know that 0.3 of it is in the intersection of B. So what I can do is I can do 0.4 minus 0.3, and that gives me that the probability of A happening and only A happening is 0.1. And then we can do the same thing to find out this, this region right here. And I can shade it so you see what I'm talking about. This region right here, we know that the probability of B is 0.5, but 0.3 of those are in the intersection. So if I did 0.5 minus 0.3, we can see that, oh, we have a 20% chance of B and not A happening. 
And so, so from there, let's kind of go through what we have here. So the probability of A or B, we could, we could look at this a couple of different ways. Um, first, we can just use our formula. So I know that the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And so we can just fill in our blanks. We have 0.1, or actually I take that back, probability of A is 0.4. And then we add probability of B, which is 0.5. And then we subtract the probability of both, which is 0.3. And if I do that, we end up with, with our answer there being 0.6. Now, another way to think about this, and this is why I think the visual is so helpful, that probability of A or B is represented anywhere in here. So another way to answer this one, maybe without as much of the, the formula, the algorithm, is you say, oh, well, 0.1 plus 0.3 plus 0.2, this whole part of the diagram represents A or B. So if you add those together, you can get the 0.6 as well. Okay. Now, let's look at the probability of B prime. Okay. Well, what we've established on a previous slide is that the probability of B not happening is 1 minus the probability of B happening. Um, in other words, uh, sorry, let me use the, the, the term, maybe not instead of B prime, I call it B complement. The probability of B complement is 1 minus the probability of B. In other, words, in other words, the probability of B not happening is 1 minus the probability of B happening. And so in this case, the probability of B is 0.5, therefore the probability of not B would also be 0.5. And you can see that we have 0.2 and 0.3 here, so there's 0.5 percent chance or a, a point a 50 percent chance of b happening so everything else in the diagram together would also add up to 0.5 because all these together are going to add up to one and lastly let's do the probability of a or not b so you might think i'm getting a little bit tricky because in this problem we have combined um, our addition rule with a complement and so let's just kind of um, work with our addition rule and see what happens so according to this would be the probability of a plus the probability of B complement minus the probability of A and B complement, okay? Well, in this situation, probability of A, 0.4, probability of B complement, 0.5, and then the, we're gonna subtract the probability of A or not B, and so this is the part that's a little bit tricky to think about, okay? But maybe, maybe some shading over here in our diagram would work. If I shade B in orange, I'm going to shade not B in blue, okay? And so what we got here is we see that, okay, here's, here's B. Everything in blue is not B. And we know that all these probabilities together are going to add to 1. So 0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.1, that's 0.6. That means we've got another 0.4 out here. Now, what we've got here is we need to figure out the probability... So what we're trying to figure out is the probability of A and not B. So everything in kind of this green color is not B. And I want to find where that intersects the A. Well, the part where that intersects the A is going to be right here. This region is A and it's also not B. Because it's the part of A that is not included in B. So this is just a very fancy way of referencing this point one that we figured out like in the very first step of this problem. So we have point 0.9 minus point 0.1, that's going to be point 0.8. Let's do another problem. So it says during a visit to a doctor's office, the probability of having neither lab work nor referral to a specialist is, is 21%. Of those coming to that office, the probability of having lab work is 41% and the probability of having a referral is 53%. What's the probability of having both, okay? And so for this problem, let's just let A refer to getting lab work done and, and B refer to getting the referral done. And so um, what I'm gonna start with is, is so, so I'm just kind of thinking out loud. And so we don't know the probability of both. In fact, the only thing that we really know at this point is that there's a 21% chance of neither. I know that this, is 53% um, and this is 41%, but I don't know the overlap. I don't know the and part. 
So, hmm. So here, here's what we do know. I know that the probability of A or B happening, all this stuff together, is going to be 1 minus 0.21. In other words, it's 1 minus the probability of not A or B. 1 minus 0.21 would give us 0.79. What that means is that all of this stuff together must add up to 0.79 because everything within the circles plus everything out in this outside the circle is going to add up to 1, right? And so just backing up there, we have figured out that the probability of A or B is 0.79. Now let's go to our addition rule because that really relates a lot of these probabilities together. Maybe that would help us somehow. So we know that the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And let's see what we figured out. We figured out that the probability of A or B is 0.79. Um, we know the probability of A already. Um, probability of A, let's see, we defined A as lab work. So that would be 0.41. We know the probability of B is 0.53. And then this is really what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out the probability of having both. So let's call that x. And now we can just solve for x. I have 0.79 equals 0.84. Oh, that's not 0.84. That's 0.94 if I combine those like terms right there, minus x. And then if I subtract 0.94 from each side, that's negative point, oops. Negative 0.15 equals negative x, or negative, or excuse me, or x equals 0.15. What that means is that x equals 15%. That means this guy right here is 15. If I wanted to, and this problem doesn't make us do it, we could do, we could take our lab work 0.41 and subtract 0.15 and say, oh, well, there's a 0.20% six, there's a 26% chance of getting only lab work done. I'm going to do 0.53 minus 0.15 and say, oh, well, that means that there's a 38% chance of having only a referral done. Um, but what we're really going for, the answer to this problem is the, oops, is the 0.15, which is the probability of both happening. And so once again, there's not an algorithm. There's not a, a certain set of steps that I'm trying to teach you. I just want you to kind of process these questions, use what you know, use your pictures, use your algorithms, and see what you can figure out. Now, here's a challenge. I really like this question. It says, using a standard deck of cards, find the following probability of drawing a seven, a diamond, or a queen. Okay? Seven or diamond or queen. Now, um, I would encourage you to pause the video, try this one on your own. This is our last problem, I promise. Um, and so try this one on your own and, and see if you can figure it out. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and jump into it. So here we have three different events. We're not really able to use our addition formula that we've been using, but we can still use the reasoning behind it, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the probability of drawing a seven, then I'm going to find the probability of drawing a diamond, then I'm going to find the probability of drawing a queen, but then I'm going to subtract any cards that got double counted within those categories. It's the same reasoning behind that addition formula without using the formal addition formula. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the probability of a seven, plus the probability of a diamond, plus the probability of a queen, but then we're going to subtract some stuff. And let me change colors to that. Then we're going to subtract, but what if there is a seven that's also a diamond? What if there is a seven that is also a queen? And what if there is a diamond that is also a queen? So anything that may have gotten double counted in these, we can just subtract out on the end. So what we have is our probability of drawing a seven. Well, there's four sevens. There's one in each suit out of 52 total. And then our probability of drawing a diamond, well, one fourth of our deck is a diamonds. There's 13 diamonds in the entire deck of 52 cards. And then our probability of drawing a queen, once again, there's four queens, one for each suit out of 52 cards. But now we gotta subtract anything that may have gotten double counted. For example, are there any cards that are sevens and diamonds? Yeah, yeah, so, so, so in fact, it's the seven of diamonds, right? So there is one card that got counted here and here. This, this seven of diamonds got counted in this category and this category, so we gotta subtract one out. Are there any cards that are both sevens and queens? 
No, those are mutually exclusive. There is no way to be both a seven and a queen, so nothing got double counted there. And then lastly, are there any cards that are both diamonds and queens? And you might be saying, yeah, you got the queen of diamonds. You'd have the queen of diamonds in this category and the queen of diamonds in this category. So we got to subtract that one card back out as well. So if I combine all of these, that's 21 cards, or a probability of 21 over 52. And then let's subtract 2 out of 52 for all these guys. And if I do that, you end up with 19 over 52, which is roughly 37%. So there are some tough problems there, but if you can do these, you can do um, everything we need, to, we need you to do.